My name is Dr. Mike Parchewski here with you from Digital Workflow Dentistry Studios. Today we're going to be talking to you about CIRAC crowns, uh, some of the workflow that I go through into making CIRAC crowns, and specifically we're going to go through the workflow to make one of the new Tessera crowns and show you the results. If you have any questions about the procedure, um, please feel free to put that in the comments below. And again, as always, please like and subscribe. Okay, so let's get started. First, we're gonna start with the acquisition. We are picking out our crown type, Densplicerona, and it will be a Tessera crown. Save that, and now let's get into our scanning. Scan the upper, scan the lower, scan the bite. Now what are some of the key things? Obviously with when we're scanning for a single crown we want to get at least the quadrant of the preparation arch, posing arch, and buckle bite. Biocopy also can be done if you're trying to match the existing crown. Include at least two to three millimeters of the gingiva and ensure adequate capture of the proximal surfaces. So here we go, we're scanning our patient, getting the imaging of the upper, lower, and the bite. Now, let's talk about some of the post-scan steps. The AI algorithm attempts to provide margin, proposed crown, and axis of insertion. Review the margin and adjust. Deselect a magnet tool to fine tune. And if the proposal crown is unusual, try changing the axis of a surgeon and recalculate. Any model flash also is important to remove. Here are some of the parameters that we use. And now let's go back to the video and we will see our scan. Here we have the upper arch. That's our prep tooth. You can see that it was, or that's our pre-tooth. You can see how damaged it was. Basically came in as a broken tooth. And this is our catalog of the preparation that we did. So um, the break obviously was a little bit extensive on the distal. And there is our buckle bite. So now we have our upper, lower, and our bite and we move on to checking the axis of insertion. Here we're checking the margin. The proposed margin was quite good. We can fine tune it if necessary. Now we're getting some reduction guide and we go ahead and move forward and it gives us the proposed crown. Once we have the proposed crown, we are going to get into our design tools. So I'm just taking a look at the proposal. So it's a decent proposal. Now, when we look at the design tools, the, the main tools are the form, move, shape. Those are the three main tools to use. Recalculate, biovariation, and reduction are secondary tools. Form tool, add, the form tool, add or smooth or remove, is an excellent tool for fine tuning. And also you can use the touch screen or the mouse to use that tool. The move tool is aligning the crown in three dimensions. And the shape tool is a very important one because that allows us to move the proportions of the crown either anatomically or circular, which we will show as we move forward. Now, I follow sort of a, a tried and true five step process to doing my CIRIC crowns. My first step is go to the move tool. Sometimes you don't need to do a lot in this one, but basically what I want you to do is orientate your crown to be in alignment in the three dimensions to the adjacent teeth and to the opposing arch. Then move on from that. So it's a quick, you know, 15, 20 seconds with the move tool. Shape tool, we go into the anatomic two direction mode, and I don't typically use the four direction mode very often, but the two direction mode, now we're moving the entire crown up and down. We're gonna align the marginal ridges. We wanna try to move the whole crown so there's not too much red contact. We wanna adjust our central groove to look at what our thickness is. Um, in that central groove because we want uh, with Tessera 1.5 millimeters ideally. Um, then look at the cusp heights, look at the embrasures, and we're going to start working on the important part which is closing those embrasures both apically and occlusally. Next, we finish with the shape tool by adjusting the buccal and lingual walls to make sure that they're in proportion to the adjacent teeth or in proportion to the an anatomy that that tooth would be within the arch. Next, we move on into the shape tool, circular, two direction, and we're basically just using that. We can set the, the circle size and we're basically fine tuning with that. Now we move into the next tool, which is the form tool. So step four, form tool, add or subtract. Add in the areas along the margins or anywhere where there's a minimal thickness issue so that we get rid of that blue coloration. 
Use the subtract tool to remove anything that's overly bulky or out of the ordinary or needs to, or needs to come down or heavy contacts. Next, our fifth step is we're moving on to fine tuning with the smooth tool, underneath, which is underneath the form tool. So in the smooth mode, you're going to set your circle size depending on where you're going to be working. And basically, we want to smooth the interproximal so that we're getting into that usually green or light blue for our contact. Um, if it's a 7, I sometimes leave a little bit of yellow because, you know, there's no uh, tooth distal to it. So we can leave the contact a little tighter. Smooth any buccal areas on the buccal or lingual and smooth high occlusion spots and beware that if you're using the smooth tool too much you're going to lose some of your anatomy. So here we go. Here we're using this, the move tool and you can see we've just, we have just didn't have to do much. We just aligned that tooth just a little bit uh, to center it to the adjacent tooth. Now we're moving on and we're going to start looking at the shape tool and we're going into the anatomical and look at we're going to start closing some of the embrasures and basically don't worry about your contact at this point just close those embrasures at the gingival embrasure like we're doing there the, so it starts looking more like an appropriate tooth in between and we don't want to be leave big gaps at the embrasures for our teeth we can also use and here this case is the circular mode and i'm just moving little parts of the tooth uh, making it a little bit thicker again we also can build out the buccal and lingual like we talked about as well so you're just using the these uh, form tools to be able to or shape tools to be able to align the basically the proportions of the tooth but my main focus is closing the embrasures now that we've gotten that finished up we can also look at the opposing arch we can look at how the crown fits between the arches okay making sure that we are in a good profile and also good occlusion now uh, my next step is I'm going to switch over to the form tool and I'm going right now into the smooth one. Remember we can also add on the margins, we can subtract wherever there's overly bulky and I'm just using the touch screen and I'm using the smooth tool to basically bring the contact from the red that we created by building out our embrasures and I'm just going to round that back down into either just a slight bit of yellow for my for my contact point. And so the more you have to build out your embrasures, the more of the red you'll end up having in that zone. So you'll notice now I'm bringing that down and now it's starting to come into better form and we're getting close to, you know, and I'm, again I'm just rounding the corners and that's getting much nicer to where we're getting just that tiny bit of yellow that I want on an upper uh, last molar there. I'm checking everywhere else now, doing some fine tuning and look, I'm going to add a little bit where I think the, it might be a little thin at the margin. And we just add a little bit where needed. And we're going to then go back and show our full arch here. And then look to see if we have anything overly bulky that we want to um, smooth out as well. Again, just adjusting a little bit on the occlusion here. Smoothing out. I noticed that my I'm a little thin on the fissure height. So you notice how I went back to my... Um, shape tool and I brought up the fissure height so now we're at a 1.64 which is reasonable uh, for a tessera crown and here I uh, things are starting to look better and we are now I'm going to want to look at just fine tuning so now I'm looking at the buckle looks a little bit bulky so let's go back to our form tool and let's just smooth that buckle face down a little bit and now we're happy with that so now we're ready to move on um, and to look at our, our sprue position and the proposal for the milling. So here's our crown within our milling block and our sprue in position. If the sprue is not in the right position, then you would like to move it. Um, you want to try to avoid any interproximal or key areas. And uh, again, confirm you got the right block and the right size. And you can go ahead and load your milling chamber and then proceed on to the milling. And here it's just sending the information to the milling chamber and we are ready to click start and start milling our crown. And here we go. So now we select our tessera block, in this case an HD A2 C14 block. We place that into the milling chamber, ensure that it seats fully, you'll feel it lock in and drops in and then tighten the screw with the supplied screwdriver. And here we have our crown milling away. 
Uh, milling time here on the MCXL was about about seven to eight minutes for this molar. Now we're able to spray glaze this. So basically it's place your crown on the, in this case we're using the um, silicone, spray it, give it a couple good sprays, place it on the honeycomb, and then place it into the, into the in this case we're using the Ivoclar oven. Uh, the speed fire is a little bit faster for this. And so now you place it in, go ahead and start your oven. And again, the programs all come in the, in the kit and in the box with all your program settings for either of your ovens. Now for finishing, we want to remove the sprue with water and a red fine diamond, polish lightly. You can ultrasonic clean it as well. And here, here we're showing going ahead and with that red diamond and lots of water, just taking that sprue down. Again, once when it went through the milling chamber, you can build up some oils on it. So you do want to make sure that you clean off those oils or any grits on there before you're going into glazing it so it's not creating impurities in your glazing surface. So now we have got uh, the sprue removed. We're ready to go. And this is what the crown looks like finished in the mouth. It's been cemented. Um, see a nice result. And this should work well for our patient. And of course, you know, you start looking at the other tooth next to it, saying it's time to get that one uh, replaced as well. And when they see the picture of it, they definitely are um, pretty impressed with the way that aesthetics look and want to go ahead and get their next tooth done. So thank you very much for watching. Um, we will post more information about this on our website as well as future videos. Please like or subscribe and follow us on Instagram. Thank you.